Hi everyone, and welcome to the Knit California podcast. My name is Leslie, I am Knit California here on YouTube and also over on Instagram and TikTok, and today I've got a regular podcast episode coming at ya. Alright, so today's kind of a weird day. Um, today is Sunday, August 20th. Uh, you may know that I live in Southern California, and we are expecting a hurricane today, Hurricane Hillary. Um, I have never <laughs> been through a hurricane before. Uh, currently, I think it's maybe drizzling outside. I have all the windows open, so I'm like looking outside. But it's very, very cloudy. There's like a tiny bit of wind, but so far nothing crazy. So we're just on storm watch today. I'm a little disappointed because I was supposed to be driving up to LA today for my nephew's baptism, but we made the difficult decision not to drive up there just in case the rain and the winds get as bad as they're potentially forecasted to be. So I'm kind of bummed out about it. Well, not kind of. I'm really bummed out about it. Um, so if my mood seems a little bit down, that's why. And I'm trying to podcast today to make myself feel better, also because uh, I need an episode to put out tomorrow, so <laughs> that's why we're here. Um, all right, on to the knitting. I have a finished object, and I've got two new whips that you haven't seen. Did I show you? Hold on. Yeah, you have not seen them yet. I had to get the swatches. Two new whips that you haven't seen, and I've got a bunch of acquisitions. Again, <laughs> I need to stop acquiring so many things because I de-stashed a ton of yarn, uh, but my cubbies are getting full again with everything that I have been acquiring. But I'll show you all of that as well. And I feel like I had something else. Oh! I have a giveaway winner. So let me do that first, actually. If you watched my last regular podcast episode, it was two weeks ago. At the very end of the episode, I announced that I would be giving away this sock set from Witchfire Fibers. Uh, this is the colorway Lilac Dreams. And all you had to do was comment your favorite cardigan pattern. Um, I loved reading through all of your favorite cardigan patterns. I have now added a few of those to my knit list. Uh, it was just really nice to see. So, um, I have not currently actively picked the winner yet, but editing future Leslie will have picked the winner. So I'm going to put the winner's name on the screen. If there's a way for me to contact you via YouTube, I will attempt to do that. If not, you can send me an email. My email is in the description box down below so that I can get your details and send you this lovely sock set. So thank you guys so much. Um, I did the giveaway at the very end of the episode and I didn't really announce it anywhere else uh, because you know, you're a real one if you stick to the end of the acquisitions <laughs> and that's what this giveaway was uh, all about. So thank you guys so much for your support on the podcast. Um, I do also have to say we are closing in at 3,000, we are, we are closing in to 3,000 subscribers, which is very exciting. We're about, oh, we're less than 50 subscribers away from 3,000. So that's definitely a really fun milestone, and I'll have to see if I can put together another giveaway when we get to that point. Yay! Okay, let's talk about my finished object you can see that I'm wearing. This is my Cal Cardigan by Claire Jackson. She is at Perfectly Knotted on Instagram. And the yarn that I use for this is Explore Knits and Fibers in their Carlsbad Worsted Base. The colorway is Fresh Balsam. You can see it's just got all of these lovely blue-green um, colors with these pops of like yellowish, orangish. This one section right here 
has a ton of like yellowy colors in it a lot more orange um and then the rest of the cardigan is just like you know normal whatever amounts but this one section right here at the top has a lot of it um i did not alternate skeins when i made this um i probably should have but the one thing that i really like about explorer knits variegated colorways is like the skeins are usually like very well like matched i want to say like the variegation from one skein to the variegation on another skein is like not that different like for a lot of hand dyers you definitely want to alternate skeins and i mean explore knits does say like you definitely should alternate skeins um but i've done a couple projects now where I should have alternated skeins and I didn't. So this is really the only pooling that I'm seeing is this one section. Uh, and I feel like it's kind of weird that it's just, just that one section because I feel like one skein of yarn was more than like just this number of rows, but I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> I'm not worried about it. Um, okay, let me give you the details. I wrote them all down, so I'm going to be looking at my notes. But, <sighs> do, 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 do. okay, I knit the size 4, which has a recommended finished bust size of 50 inches to fit a bust circumference of 40 to 42 inches, which is right where I'm sitting. That's about 8 to 9 inches of positive ease on me. And I don't know how I did it, but the recommended gauge is 18 stitches per 4 inches on 5 millimeter needles, and my gauge was exactly 18 stitches per 4 inches on 5 millimeter needles. So, Claire, I guess you and I have the same knitting gauge. I don't know how you get gauge on other projects because I have such a hard time with it, um, but I was really, really excited. And so when I went to block this, um, it came out exactly as it was supposed to come out. Uh, the width ended up being, what I do is I like lay the cardigan down on the bed and I just measure across. So from like, from under the arm here to under the arm here was 25 inches. So I know if I multiply that by two, that's 50 inches. And that's the circumference that the cardigan is supposed to be at the end after blocking. It was exactly where it was supposed to be and I was very excited. Um, I, the length that I measured from under the arm to the end of the body, I did nine inches. I think I actually added one inch in length compared to what the pattern recommended. I feel like it's at a pretty good length for me. I should have put on, um, I should have put on jeans because it looks really good in jeans, but it hits me like right above my tush, my booty, whatever you want to call it. <laughs> it looks really good when I'm wearing high-waisted jeans. You'll see in the photos that I post. Um, but I could have knit probably another inch longer from this and it would have been fine. Um, I feel like with some other pants skirts maybe another inch would have been nice but I'm okay with where it's at now. Um, I did use the recommended needle size so five millimeter needles on the body and then you're supposed to continue using the same needle size on the ribbing cuffs and the ribbing hem, but I actually went down. I find that with my one by one ribbing, it really doesn't look that great in the same size needle, unless I'm doing twisted rib, but because of the button band and the shoulder detail, like not being in twisted rib, it's in brioche, actually. Um, I didn't want to just like do twisted rib on the cuffs because I thought that would look too different. So anyways, I went down to four millimeters on the sleeves really to just bring them in a little bit more. And I went down to 4.5 millimeter on the hem. So the other thing that I did differently and like why I went down a full needle size on the sleeve cuffs is because 
and I think I talked about this in the last episode. I had some issues knitting the sleeves as they were written in the pattern. Um, basically, the arm here where you like knit the back panel, knit the front panel, and then connect them together. This opening, like when I measured it, was pretty much the same circumference as my bicep, which I was like, okay, this will be fine as long as we pick up the correct number of sleeve stitches. So I started with the number of sleeve stitches that's recommended in the pattern. Um, they tell you to do like knit, pick up three, skip one, pick up three, skip one. Um, and when I did that and I knit the sleeve, it ended up being like really toothpick sleeve, like extremely tight. And I just realized that really wasn't what I wanted because like the rest of the cardigan was super oversized. I didn't want the arms to be really skinny. Uh, I wanted them to kind of look proportional. So I ended up picking up the sleeves two more times. The second time I tried... I think five stitches then skip one and it still ended up being a little bit too tight for me and finally I ended up with six stitches skip one um, so really I mean it's almost stitch for stitch and I was worried that it would like you know how when you pick up too many sleeve stitches and it starts like puckering and like it looks weird I was worried it was gonna do that but it doesn't do that at all so I'm really happy I picked up that number of sleeve stitches and then I changed the decrease rate for the sleeves also. The pattern tells you to decrease pretty rapidly and I changed it to decreasing uh, once every 10 rows and it worked great for me. And so um, going down to you know one full needle size for the sleeve cuff also helped cinch the sleeve cuff in a little bit because you can see that there's like space here. I didn't make it like super tight all the way um, at the wrist, which I am totally okay with. I think this is just enough. Also the sleeves, like I knit them a Look, I didn't knit the sleeves too short, okay? And that's normally my problem <laughs> on sweaters. Um, I could have actually probably knitted them a little bit shorter because when I like stand up, they're like to here which is kind of exactly where I want them to be but also slightly too long but I'm not mad about it I mean you just push it up a little bit like I pull it up here pull it up here and like they're fine so let's see what else do I need to tell you about this um I used just over five skeins of the worsted weight yarn so if I maybe had done the sleeves again a little bit tighter or you know the body is like super oversized so if it was a little bit less oversized I really could have gotten away with just five skeins which is really nice because I have another sweater quantity I don't know if you can see here right above the hot pink yarn is the yarn that I showed last time the Bella Filato Studio cozy flannel in a worsted weight and I really want to make a cardigan out of that so it's only five skeins so I know I could make this if I size down the body just a little bit or I'm thinking of making the field day cardigan with that so I'll have to look at the yardages and see if it makes sense but anyways I ended up using about 1100 yards um oh the details of this so I kind of already mentioned but the button band as well as the shoulder detail here are both knit in brioche which this was the first time that I had ever done brioche I'd never tried it before I didn't realize that that's what this detail was at first and when I started reading through the pattern I was just like well I guess we're learning how to do brioche in this cardigan and it turns out it was really easy like there was no need for me to worry at all and I think this detail is really cute and it's definitely something different that I don't have in any of my other knitted garments the other thing that is really different about this is the construction 
in general. Like it's similar to a raglan construction where you have the seam and then you're increasing on either side of it, but there aren't four, you know, raglan has two in the front and two in the back, seams, increase areas, whatever. There's only these two that are supposed to sit right on top of your shoulders here and here. And then the back is all just like one big panel and then you've got the front two panels also um so it's definitely different it's it's more like a drop shoulder definitely more a drop shoulder construction obviously you can see the shoulder is dropped um but different than i have ever constructed a drop shoulder and then the other thing is you knit the button band at the same time as the rest of the cardigan and this one you're actually knitting on the same needle size as the body so it's not like you have you know little um dpn sticking out to knit on a different needle size so all of that makes it like really nice that you don't have to like pick up the button band after you've knit the whole body and it's on the same needle size so i love that it helps make the cardigan go much quicker and i just think it like it looks really really good and it's just a tiny detail that is the button band i mean your yarn really stands out in the rest of the cardigan and then i finally added in on my buttons um, I went to Joanne Fabrics and they used to have like a way better button selection compared to what was there when I went uh, last weekend. Like I was really unimpressed with their button selection. I was trying to look for some wooden buttons. Um, I asked on Instagram what kind of buttons people would put on this and like the vast majority of people said like a dark wood or wood would look really nice. So that's what I was going for but... They did not have any wood buttons there. So I went with these gold. I thought they looked kind of fun. They do seem a little bit like fancier than the cardigan really calls for. So I may go on Etsy and get some wooden buttons. But for now, they'll work. I was walking around with just... Um, <laughs> Like it's those stitch marker light bulb markers in here uh, For a long time it was fine I wore this to work with no buttons and just the light bulb markers and nobody said anything because nobody really cares so But I think that's it. Let me just double check yeah, overall, I think the construction of this cardigan is super interesting and engaging, and I love the finished object. So, if you are interested in knitting a cardigan, um, I would definitely recommend the Cal Cardigan by Claire Jackson. Really, really fun knit. And I knit this in about five weeks. Because I know a lot of people ask. And a lot of people are like, you knit things really fast. And I was like... This took me over a month to knit. I didn't really think it was that fast. Um, and it was worsted weight, but it's done. My desk right here is like right under the air conditioning. So I've been wearing this like almost every day, like this exact outfit with my <laughs> tank top and my cardigan uh, while I'm working. And it's been really nice, so. Um, okay, let's move on to my current works in progress. Okay, if you watched last week's video, actually hold on. Okay, if you watched last week's video, which was my Ireland knitting plans, then you will have seen, I think, the setup for all of these projects that I'm about to show you. Um, but I have made a decent amount of progress on one of these. So the first one that I'm gonna show you is I am knitting the Dorney sweater by Rebecca Klo. She's at the Crea Bea on Instagram and here on YouTube. And the yarn that I'm using for this is Coast to Coast yarn. There we go. 
in the colorway gothic house with secrets and this is on uh the natural worsted base which is a 100 percent superwash merino four ply worsted and then it, it's in this lovely green color which i felt was very ireland and let me show you my little swatch don't these cables look so good so good okay and let me show you my progress hold on let me get the strings out of the way i should have weaved woven them in i should have weaved them in first but i didn't dun, 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 dun. this is my yoke so far let's see look at the like ribbing details in between the cables cables look so good um i should have also put this on like you know what i'm almost done with the yoke i have like a couple more rows left so when i'm done with the yoke before i split for sleeves i'm gonna put it on um stretchy cords and like try it on obviously i need to add the collar you do the collar um separately for this one so I'll probably do that after I split for sleeves as well but just to see you know what it's looking like because it's not really in the right shape right now but I'm really happy with it the cables are looking really good I did the other night <laughs> make a huge mistake and um, twisted one of these cables the wrong way it was like one of these ones right on the front and I was like well, it's right on the front. I definitely need to fix it. So I laddered down like 10 rows and then switched the cable. I laddered down all six stitches in the one cable, flipped it, and then laddered back up. And I was like, oh, that was scary. But I did it. So I told myself if I notice any other uh cable mistakes that i would film it the next time i need to ladder down and um fix it i mean i've got a whole cabled sweater here i've got a whole second cabled sweater that i'm going to show you soon so it's bound to happen at least another time um but yeah this is my progress so far in the dorney again i'm trying to finish the yoke i only got a couple more rows this weekend so today's the day and then i'll split for sleeves and i'm trying to decide if well my original plan was to like switch off every day working on this and working on my second one and I started to see a lot of progress on this one really fast after my second day working on it so this is the only one I've been interested in picking up uh, and so now that I'm almost at the yoke I'm like well I need to finish the yoke before I can do anything with the other one so I don't know if I'm going to continue working on this one or if maybe I'll switch and try to make more progress on my second one We'll see it's too many decisions <laughs> but that's that is my dorney sweater and the second one that i have cast on that i'm working on also for ireland is the eclair raglan by laura penrose penrose knits um she is also here on youtube and also over on instagram and i am using this beautiful explorer knits colorway for this one um, in her Carlsbad worsted base in the colorway oxide. I'm just going like full ham into worsted projects right now. This cardigan was worsted weight. Both of these sweaters are worsted weight. My shawl is fingering held double but also knit on five millimeter needles so basically also worsted weight. Just lots of five millimeter needles flying around over here. <laughs> um, but I love this pink color so much and here's my pitiful excuse for a swatch for this one basically what happened was i was swatching in the round and trying to leave all of these strings in the back so that i could block it without having to cut any of these in case i needed the yarn which i probably like won't even need the yarn but i was getting really really stressed out with all of these strings and my like stitches at the end of the swatch not being tight even though i kept pulling these to make them tight it was just like you're like you can even see like 
those are the edge stitches like WTF it was making me really really upset and stressed out and so I finally just bound it off and I was like this is as good as we're getting and what happened was I was definitely not meeting gauge I was way my gauge was way too big so um, according to this gauge swatch I should have gone down a needle size from a 5 to a 4.5 millimeter did I actually do that Oh, I did. Yeah, so I did. But this is like really weird for me. Usually I have to go up a needle size because I'm a tight knitter. And in the last, the last time I made Laura Penrose patterns, I went up needle sizes. So that's why I think also why I've been just um, a little wary of this project. I think what I need to do, oh, I guess oh, here's my progress so far. It is looking really good. You can see the cables. And I like the thick rib, like in between the cables on this one. It's really nice. Um, I think what I need to do is put this on stretchy cords, lay it out, and measure it, measure the gauge. If I need to do a steam blocking or a regular blocking or something, I will. Um, just to see how close we are with these 4.5 millimeter needles. Um, this this was just the short rows, so at this point where I'm at now, I need to like cast on some stitches and join in the round. So this is the back. I guess it's actually like this. This is the back. <laughs> um, but yeah, I really, I mean, pulling this out again and looking at it, like I love this color. Like I've been working with so many greens and blues and stuff that getting these like warm pink color back on my needle... Um, I really, it makes me want to work on this more, so maybe I'll do that later, but that's my second work in progress, and okay, let me show you my last work in progress, you've seen this before, but I have made good progress on it, this is my This is my Sophie Shawl by Petite Knit, and the yarn that I'm using for this is Hedgehog Fibers uh, Sock Base in the colorway Taffy, and I decided to stop right in the middle of a row, but I don't know if you can see this, I made it to the turn, so all this side I was increasing, and right here's the little point and so now I'm starting to decrease which I'm really happy about it means I'm past the halfway mark I've been holding these two skeins together and I'm really close to finishing these two and then I will just have my one full skein uh, left to use. I'm going to pull from the inside if I can find the inside and the outside of this one to finish it up. So I'm really loving this project. This is like the only project that I have right now. Well, I do have a hat on the needles, but I'm annoyed with the yarn, so I haven't been working on it. But this is my only like plain knitting um, project right now. So if I want to read and knit, this is like what I need to pull out and work on because there's no way I can work on that cable, either of these cable projects with all of the like knits and pearls, knits and pearls in between the cables, I can't do that while reading. I will definitely, definitely screw up more than <laughs> I will make progress. So yesterday I really wanted to read my book. I'm reading The Serpent and the Wings of Nyaxia, I think that's what it's called. Um, and so I really wanted to read that and knit at the same time. So I pulled out my Sophie shawl, made a little bit of progress on it. So yay, those are my whips. So let me, let us move on to acquisitions. Okay, I'm going to start with my non-yarn acquisitions first because they're smaller and more easily manageable. Um, 
But Twice Shared Sheep was having a 50% off select items sale this week. By the time you are seeing this video, it will be August 21st and the sale will be over. It ran from the 15th through the 20th. I post about it on my Instagram like a ton, so hopefully you were able to see it there and grab something if you were interested in, interested in grabbing something. Um, you know I have like a ton of row counters already, but there were some charms that I didn't have that I really wanted. So the first one, let me show you, was one of their summer charms. Oh, come on. And it's this tiny, tiny little pineapple. I think it's super cute. And I'm really excited about this one because it is so small. Like some of the bigger ones, like the one I'm gonna show you next, if they've got too many like pieces sticking out, the yarn can kind of catch on it sometimes and it can kind of be annoying. So this one I really think is gonna become like my newest favorite because it's so small, like I don't think it's gonna catch on yarn at all. Um, and I got the medium size. They go up to a US 8, which I think is five millimeter needle, which is really my sweet spot currently, like I was saying earlier. Um, so that's the first one I picked up. And the second one that I picked up, remember when I was um, talking about fourth wing like a lot it, on Instagram? And I think I talked about it in my last podcast episode. Well, they had a dragon. And this dragon is going to be saying goodbye. Basically, they're not going to be making the dragon ones anymore. And I was like, <laughs> I just finished fourth wing. Like, I absolutely need the dragon row counter. So, that's what I got. It looks like Taren. And I'm um, really excited about it. This one's also a medium. And then I also got to go along with my dragon row counter. They had dragon stitch marker sets. Oh gosh. Why, I turn it around and then all these little charms just face the wrong ways. It's basically the same dragon charm and then these stitch markers are like little colorful dragon scales. So again, fourth wing fans. Know how they had like all the different colored dragons. Um, these are really fun. So I got the closed, closed ring. I think they're called melody rings um, or infinity rings. I don't know. One of them, there's one that's called melody and one that's called infinity. I think the infinity ones are the closed and the melody ones are the open. So you can use it as a stitch marker or a progress keeper. And the open ones you can also use really easily on crochet. That's just like, in general, twice shared sheep, uh, different types of things. Um, but this one I had to get a size large because they didn't have the dragons in a medium anymore, which like, ugh, fine, whatever. Uh, this fits up to a US 10.5. So, obviously it'll still fit on all of my 5mm needles and below. So, I'm really excited about these. Um, I am an affiliate member with Twice Sheared Sheep, so my affiliate link is always linked down below in the description box if you're interested in checking out any of their knitting tools. Um, I did purchase these. I do have an affiliate discount code that I can use, but I did purchase these. They were not gifted to me, but I ha do have a ton of row counters that I use um, often that were gifted to me. So just as an FYI. Okay, um, another thing that I purchased and received this week, actually last week, I don't know, it doesn't matter. It's white and now covered in black dog hair because that's how Everything is around here, thanks to Buddy, who's sitting right, laying on the floor next to me. Um, is this project bag. This is from 
Ocean Knits. You can see right there. And I just thought this design was super, super cute. It's a girl knitting, and she's sitting on top of a whale, and they're in the ocean. She's got braids, and I just loved it. And I was like, I need that little, little tiny project bag. Just a really simple canvas bag with a zipper. And there were actually like some shipping delays in getting these sent out. And so I think because of that, this was also included in my order. Can you tell how holographic this is? It's really cool. I didn't order this, this was just included, but it's a little like snap bag. I don't know what I'm gonna use this for. I feel like a skein of yarn. That's so colorful. I don't know if a skein of yarn is like really gonna fit in here. I don't know, I'll have to figure it out. But it's so fun. I love it. And it's got like a little it's got two tassels on it. But I feel like you could use this as a bag for like, you know, when you have to go to sporting events or stadiums or whatever and it needs like a clear bag. You could use this, throw some credit cards in there, and you're good to go. But it's super fun. Alright, so those were my non-yarn acquisitions, and now over to my yarn acquisitions. I have been sitting on one of these for a while, but I was waiting for the full set to arrive. Um, earlier this summer, Red Door Fiber Studio and Explore Knits did a mini Emily Henry collection. Um, and I was in the midst of reading all four of Emily Henry's books when this came out, and I was very, very excited um, because I liked all of her books. I really enjoyed that couple weeks span when I read all four of them. <laughs> um, and so I had to get one sock set of each of their four colorways. So this is book lovers, this is people we meet on vacation, this is happy place, and this is beach read. And beach read and book lovers, let me see, book lovers was my first favorite, then beach read, then happy place, then people we meet on vacation. And she actually is promoting a new book right now. I forget what it's called off the top of my head, but I'm really excited about that. But my thought for each of these sock sets is to use them all in a project together. I really want to make a blanket. I feel like it'll be really cool to have like a book themed little blanket to cuddle up with while I'm reading and knitting and, and all that fun stuff. So there's actually a pattern. Um, I've been super interested in... <sighs> Laura Penrose has been knitting this blanket for her daughter and it's like this triangle blanket, like these little garter stitch triangles and I've really been loving that. And then I saw on Instagram this was just like yesterday or the day before. Um, Pearl Soho posted a pattern that they are doing a giveaway for, and I believe it's called the Prism Blanket. I saved it in my favorites so that I could show you. Yep, it's called the Prism Blanket by Pearl Soho. Um, the photo will be up so that you can actually see it better than this, but it's super similar to what Laura Penrose is knitting. So it's got these garter stitch triangles. Um, the one that Laura is knitting, the triangles are smaller, but this is a free pattern by Pearl Soho, and so I feel like you can just take this and modify it to make the triangles any size you want. But I feel like that will be super fun with all of these different colors. Um, and I got the sock set specifically so that I would have the minis in here also. So the majority of the blanket will be the variegated skeins, but I'll have the mini colorways like interspersed throughout also for some like solids. And currently I'm trying to decide if I want every triangle to be colorful or if I want to also do similarly to what Laura is doing where like 
I don't know if you can see. Okay, so like the triangles make up a square, right? So have one of the triangles in the square be the colorful yarn and one of the triangles in the square just be like a solid like white or cream color. I feel like that would be super fun and visually interesting and would allow these variegated colorways to shine more actually by having that nice contrast of the cream. So I think that's what I'm leaning more towards. I have a couple cream colorways in my stash that I'm gonna pull out and see if they would work um, or I feel like I could just order some like nitpicks stroll fingering um, or something similar to that in like an undyed colorway or like a beigey cream colorway um, and hold that with these. I'm also thinking of making this triangles smaller just so that I can use more of the variegated yarn if that makes sense I don't know we'll see um I'm not I'm probably not gonna be able to cast this on until later this fall or winter um I'm so <laughs> I'm starting to get to that point where I'm just like a little bit overwhelmed with my knitting because I'm like on a deadline again basically with knitting these two sweaters for Ireland. Um, I've realized and I've been thinking about this a lot this week, I'm like less inspired to actually work on these cabled sweaters now that I feel like I have to. And it's the same feeling that I get when I'm participating in a knit along when I have like told the organizer of the knit along that I am participating and then they like have expectations about me participating and like finishing the project. It's the exact same feeling that I get when that happens to what's happening right now where like you know, that is potentially part of the reason why I haven't worked more on the second, the pink um, cabled sweater, because I'm feeling like I have to, and I don't like that feeling. I keep looking over at my yarn stash, and I'm just like, I just want to be inspired by all of these yarns and knit up, like, some of these sweaters that I have waiting, that have been waiting for so long, but I feel like I have to knit these to wear in Ireland, which, like, I I don't like to be honest I have a closet full of sweaters that I can wear also you know but I want to have that perfect like cabled worsted weight green sweater to wear when I'm there because I know when I get there if I don't have this that I'm gonna have a little bit of FOMO for everyone else's cabled green sweaters that they're gonna have and I'm just gonna keep thinking oh I should have knit that sweater so you know, it's just like a little bit of a war going on in my head. Um, but anyways, I'm not going to be able to start that blanket until after we get back from Ireland. Maybe I could take it like as some of my Ireland knitting, but no, that's a lot of, that's a lot of different colors that I would need to bring and I'm not going to have the space for that. Um, I'm probably just going to bring a hat or two to work on while I'm there. I'm also going to be buying a bunch of yarn while I'm there, so, you know, anything is possible. Okay, I have one more, one more acquisition to show you, um, and that is these three beautiful skeins from Ruby and Roses. So this one, I'm going to take the band off so you can see this better. Yeah, look at all these colors. Definitely like a fall inspired colorway. So this one is called um, Cathedral Portal. And these are all on her soft rose base, which is an 8515 Superwash Merino Nylon 4-ply yarn. This one is Apple Cider. I love this. This is so fun with the pinks and then all the speckles. She does speckles really, really well. And then my favorite of the three actually is this tonal. Look how deep magenta, purple, pink, red this is. I absolutely love it. And this one is called Wax Seal. 
So, I am now an affiliate member with Ruby and Roses. Um, so, my affiliate link, if you're interested in purchasing any yarn from Ruby and Roses, also is going to be in the description box down below. My thought for these three skeins is that these are going to become hats. Um, you know that I love the Oslo hat, but the Oslo hat takes two skeins of yarn. So I've been researching on Ravelry one skein of fingering weight hats, and I do have a couple that I'm super interested in. So let me tell you the names of them <laughs> in case you're curious. Okay, so the first one is the head sock. Um, and this is like a 2x2, two two, maybe 3x2 ribbed hat. Um, the largest size can be made with 400 yards, it says, so perfect for one skein of fingering. And this pattern is a free pattern, so I'm really interested in this one. And then the second one... Is called the spur hat um, actually it says in the description that it's a German word and it's pronounced spur in German spur hat so I don't even know if I'm pronouncing that right but this one is also ribbed it's got two different rib textures in here so the brim is I'm filming a podcast so the brim is two by two and then there's like one by one details in here also but I really like the way the increases are done on this hat. I feel like it's very different from like a normal one by one ribbed hat. Um, so that's why I'm interested in this one. This one is a paid for pattern, but uh, definitely worth it. I have no problem buying <laughs> paid for patterns. So I'm thinking this one I will cast on first. This will likely be my Ireland knitting project that I will take like on the plane. And I'm thinking of doing the Spur hat in this one. And then I think this one will be a really nice uh, two by two. So that's what I'm thinking for this one. And we'll see. This one, I'm not sure yet. I'll have to decide uh if there's another hat pattern that i find for one skein that i can do that i'm really gonna like um or if i like one of those two patterns maybe i'll make that so that's my plan there i would also love like i'm honestly considering getting a sweater quantity of this one because i feel like a sweater in this like first of all this is these like dark bright jewel tones are definitely my color and i feel like this would make a gorgeous sweater I don't know which one, but you know I've got a ton in my favorites, so anything would be beautiful in this. Oh, the other thing that I wanted to talk to you about, this is getting to be a long episode, I know, okay, <laughs> I'm aware. Last thing, um, I think I talked about this in the last episode, maybe the episode before that, uh, and by last episode, I keep saying that the last full podcast, not the last knitting plans video. Um, but I am also a VIP affiliate member for Olive and June nail polish. Um, so I just wanted to show you my nails today. Uh, I did these a couple days ago. I'm loving this like really soft, subtle pink colorway. But the Olive and June fall nail polish collection uh, launched this week. And so I just wanted to give you a quick snapshot at the fall colors. Um, I did purchase three of the fall colors. I purchased Shacket, Can I Borrow Your Sweater, and PSL pumpkin spice latte and then I purchased two others that I have been interested in so when I get all of those in I will be sure to also show you them as well but if you're also interested in uh, Olive and June nail polish the link my affiliate link will be down in the description box below I have a whole section now that is like all of my affiliate links so it has my twice shared sheep link um, the ruby and roses link the Olive and June link, and my Ana Luisa jewelry link, which I have another video that will be sponsored by them coming out in September, um, but I am wearing them all today. 
and oh my Amazon favorites link as well so all of those are basically just extra income yarn money for me and the income that I make from my commission sales really helps to pay for the work I do in filming and editing the podcast as well as all of the posts that I make on Instagram. Um, and I'm always extremely appreciative whenever anyone decides to click on one of my links. So. I know there's a lot of hate for, you know, the influencing and especially people that talk about and do these ads in knitting podcasts. Um, don't worry, I read about all of it on Reddit. But, you know, it really does help to provide a little bit of extra income for all of the work that occurs behind the camera and on the camera. And uh, I am really appreciative of it, so thank you. Um, there are discount codes for um, some of these companies as well. Ana Luisa. <laughs> There's too many. Um, Ana Luisa, Olive and June Nail Polish, and Ruby and Roses. I have discount codes for all of those, and they will be in the description box down below. Just make sure you read them. Um, some of them are like 20% off everything. Um, the nail polish Olive and June is 20% off if you buy the full system for your first time order which is what I did when I first bought the nail polish, so, yeah. All right. Coming up, I'm just gonna keep working on these whips that I've got, um, my shawl and my two sweaters, so that I can get them ready for Ireland when I leave in October, early October, and yeah. I'm not sure what next week's video is going to be. It might just be another... We might just have podcast episodes uh, up until I leave for Ireland. We'll have to see because I don't necessarily need to be doing <laughs> more work um, and showing any more plans until I finish these. So that's probably what we're going to be getting. So anyways, that's it. I hope you enjoyed today's episode. I hope you got a chance to get some knitting in. If you haven't subscribed already, I mentioned at the beginning we're almost at 3,000, so I would really appreciate it. By we, I just really mean me. <laughs> and the dogs. I would show you a dog right now, but they're all, they're all asleep on the floor. Um, and yeah, thanks for watching, and I will see you on the next one. Bye! Buddy? Hey, mine. Love you. Hey, Lollipop. What are they doing? Are you taking a nap? Good oh, girl. Where's Rocky? Is he under the bed? Probably. Let's see. Oh! There he is. Hey, Rock. What are you doing, my love? This is his safe space. All right, bye.